This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the world's thinnest display. There have been a bunch of these popping up over the last two or three years. This one got my attention because it has a pen. Someone asked me on Twitter if I had reviewed it yet, and I said, no, I have not. Espresso saw that tweet and reached out to me and said, hey, let us send you our display and a couple of the accessories, including that pen. But this video is not sponsored by Espresso, so my thoughts here are my own. And to prove it, I'm gonna say something bad. This is not the thinnest display in the world. I actually have a thinner one. This is just marketing. The Espresso is actually as thin as you can make a display and still fit a USB-C port into it. The other display I have like this, I picked up earlier this year because I thought it would be good for filming screenless drawing tablets and it was really cheap. And it feels really cheap. The screen goes under the bezels, the colors are blah, but it gets the job done. The Espresso aims to be a more premium version of many of the other displays like this out there. It's edge-edge glass, the body is aluminum, the display just looks so much better. Better. It has a touch screen and of course, pen support. And most importantly, for a snobby artist type like me, it doesn't look out of place next to a high-end PC or a MacBook. Now, just because you can draw on it, I would say this is a portable monitor first and foremost. That is its number one job. It is 15 inches, it's a full HD display, that's 1920 by 1080, and it's powered via a single USB-C cable. So this thing is very easy to just slip into your bag along with your laptop, you could take it with you, and I think that is the real benefit of something like this. The catch, well, it costs more when you compare it to other portable monitors that are in the same category. But when you wanna start talking about value, I think this gets a little bit interesting because I started comparing this to other pen displays. So for example, the touchscreen XP Pen Artist 16 TP, that starts at $675. And the Wacom Cintiq Pro 16 is $1,500. In that context, $500 plus $80 for the pen, that's not that bad. But that does bring us to the big question, how good is the pen? Now the pen is an additional accessory. This is using Microsoft's pen protocol. So if you've ever used most Surface pens or have seen a review of a Surface device that I've done in the past, you have some idea of how this pen performs. I will put an asterisk by this because I just recently reviewed the latest Surface Pro that has the slim Pen 2. That pen does work on this display, but it doesn't have any of the benefits and improvements that we see on the new Surface Pros. The Mac and the PC experience are a little bit different from each other, so I'm going to talk about the PC first. A lot of the pen support here is native within Windows, so you don't have to install any drivers to get this to work. The monitor was just plug and play. It was crazy easy to set up. I, I did run into a little bit of a bug. I got a bad cable that came with my monitor. It didn't work with any of my accessories, so I just took a different USB-C cable I had lying around and I was off to the races. This is a battery powered pen. It does have a little charging port along the side that takes a USB type C connector. As far as I could tell, there really wasn't any way of seeing how much charge the pen has left or how much further you can draw. I drew with it for a fair amount of time and it never ran out. So my assumption is with many of these pens that are similar to this is it's gonna last you a while on each charge. So first, the pros of a pen like this. The palm rejection is phenomenal. This is best in class. This is really, really good. I almost never get a false mark or accidentally choose the wrong layer with the palm of my hand when it's sitting on the screen. That's probably why Microsoft chose this as their universal standard for pen. Most people are going to find extra marks on their page far more annoying than an artist looking for wave in a pen. But for me, I want those super clean lines and that becomes one of the biggest cons of Microsoft's pen protocol. The lines on this display are, they're really wavy. It is not hard to find them and you're going to accidentally find them in your lines when you're just drawing organically. And it doesn't really matter what MPP pen you use, you're gonna get the same results. For example, I just grabbed the Surface Pen, drew on this monitor, same exact thing. Now I mentioned before, this is something that Microsoft has been working on. That Slim Pen 2 that I just reviewed, it is much better. But I think that works outside of the standard protocol because on any other display, that pen gets really wonky. It does weird stuff. If you are taking notes or retouching photos or doing 3D modeling, the wavy lines are just no big deal. You're probably not even gonna notice them. But for me and my style of drawing, it's really dependent on the line art and the outlines that I create. So that is the PC, what about the Mac? So it's not quite as plug and play there. You have to install some drivers to get this working properly. Now the software does require you to create an account in order to use the drivers. But once you do, there's a bunch of extras packed in. Quick note, this software also exists on the PC, so if you see any features that you like, 
you can download the software and use them on a PC as well. A lot of the features that are built into Espresso software remind me of features that were built into Windows 11 last year. Features like saving your desktop layouts or snapping windows to part of the screen. Also within the settings, you could do a lot of other things. For example, you could toggle on and off the touch screen. It's also worth pointing out here that this does bring touch features to the Mac. That doesn't seem like a huge deal, but I think they did a really good job of that. There's something about the Mac that makes adding touch features really wonderful. When I was reviewing the new 27 inch Cintiq and I was like pinching and zooming in Photoshop and especially like panning around, it's just weird. It doesn't work the way a touchscreen should. Even Apple's own sidecar is really wonky with touch. But here with the Espresso, it feels native. It feels the way you'd think touch should work on a Mac. Now the pen itself does have many of the same problems that I, I found on the PC. There's still a lot of wave to the line. So even though they probably had to do a lot more work to get this pen running on the Mac, there aren't really many improvements here over Windows. Now, before I get to the accessories, I need to shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Have you ever wanted to sell something online? Well, Squarespace is here to save the day. It's not only an all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website, it is your gateway to selling your products, the content you create, or even your time. Squarespace lets you make your very own online store so you can sell your products to the world. Whether you're selling physical or digital products, Squarespace has all the tools you need to get started now. Squarespace's best in-class website templates are super easy to set up and customized to your heart's content. You can browse by your category of business and find the perfect starting place. Squarespace also makes it easy to keep in touch with your audience using their email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers, starting with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like your site color, your logo. There's also built-in analytics that let you measure the impact of every cent. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. They also sent over some other stuff for me to try out too. I mentioned earlier that something that I like is how it doesn't look out of place next to a really nice laptop. I know some people just go for price when they're buying hardware. Personally, I like price plus a little bit of quality on the side. And, and this is one of those things that I think really shown when I was looking at some of the accessories, specifically the stand. This is a really nice stand. I want something like this for my iPad. The display magnetically attaches to the back and the hinges are really good. They're really stiff and I mean that in a good way. So this is not gonna slide off or fall over or do something wonky. This is a very heavy stand. I think the stand weighs more than the display itself. Also, if you're the type of person who likes a sideways display, this is magnetic. You could just turn the display and Boom, there you go. Is it a good stand for drawing? Ah, not really. You know, what it comes down to is if you set it up on a nice drawing angle, if you keep your hand at the bottom of the screen, it works really well. But because of the way it's weighted and pivots, uh, as soon as your hand gets to a certain point, like the midway of the screen, it's just gonna fall down on you. If you are gonna be taking this with you somewhere, they have a more portable stand cover thing. This attaches magnetically at the top. You can fold the screen over and then just toss it in your bag. Now, when I first got this out of the bag and I connect the magnets and close it, the magnets would then immediately like snap off. So I had to go in there with the hinge and really like work it out and get that like edge softened up in order to keep this attached when I was using it. Even then it does occasionally pop off. Lastly, they sent me over a matte screen protector. I thought this was nice. The texture gives my pen more grip and I much prefer drawing on surfaces like this than a smooth glass screen. The trade-off is that it does dull the screen a little bit. That's gonna happen with any matte screen protector you put on any display. The colors aren't gonna be as punchy, but for me that's a trade-off I'm happy to make. So what is my verdict? It really depends. I think this is a good product. It is a good portable display, but I'm not convinced it's a good drawing tablet. At this point, Microsoft's pen protocol just isn't cutting it for art. There's just better stuff out there. If you're looking for a portable monitor first that you occasionally could draw on or do photo retouching on or that sort of thing, yeah, this works really well for that. Maybe some light sketching or some notes, it's fine. But when you really get into that detail line work, I think that's where things fall off and you're better off looking for a dedicated drawing tablet. If you are looking for a graphics tablet and are wondering where to start, I'll link up something right here that I think will help you out. Or if you wanna check out my second channel, I'll link that over here as well. What do you think about Espresso Display? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you in a couple of days.